Uh, this is a fun panel. Um, it's all I really need to know about business I learned from swimming. And uh, I'll give a quick intro, but I want to introduce, reintroduce some of our, our, our panelists here. Starting on your far right, uh, you met her last night with a killer presentation on sponsorship, Ellen Lucy. And then we'll save, save Mentenko for last yeah. here. Um, and another great presentation on leadership, bringing in alumni and how to create service and create value for partners. 31 years at Princeton, uh, Susan Teeter. And then in the middle, uh, swam under the name of Lindsey Binko, uh, is now the national team uh, managing director on the USA Swimming staff, and a two-time Olympian and gold medalist. And her office is really close to mine, so <laughs> I'm not going to do anything to intentionally embarrass her, <laughs> Lindsey Mentenko. <laughs> So, so the panel, we're going to go through a series of questions and then open up to the floor. And, but in some ways, this may be preaching to the choir a little bit about the benefits of swimming uh, to the people in this room. But the reason we really wanted to do this is I put, there are some questions that are going to be somewhat in what I call the Captain Obvious category uh, about the benefits of swimming. But sometimes we get so close to it, we need to be reminded of this is how to talk about swimming to people outside the sport whether it be parents, whether it be prospective parents, prospective partners. And so some of the questions um, are, are along that line of really just a gentle reminder of how we need to talk about swimming and differentiate it from other youth sports and Olympic sports out there. So, so with that, and, and we'll switch it around with the panelists on answering different questions, but I would like all three to maybe take, uh, take this one, is, um, you know, a lot of sports build character, hard work, discipline, gymnastics, soccer, fencing. There's so many sports that can make a case uh, for that. So how do you like to talk about swimming and differentiate it from other sports out there? And maybe we'll start with you, Susan, and, and, and go this direction. Well, I think, um, I think when you're in a time-based sport, where everything you do is on a clock, visible to everyone. You have to really step up to who you are, how you act, and how you're gonna handle pressure in every situation on any given day. And so I don't think there's a lot of sports like that, um, you know, maybe track, but other sports you can hide in, you know, you can just, you can be the team player and you can be out there on the field and if you're having a bad day, maybe only your coach knows, but the world doesn't know. And, you know, I think when you, especially if you take one, our elite athletes, you know, if you set a world record, you're always expected to set a world record. And if you don't, you're a failure in, in their mind. And it's not really that way. You just can't do it every time. And so I think our sport allows people to figure out how to be resilient, how to look at themselves uh, inside and say, how am I going to get this best? And what is best today? You know, what's my best today? Not just always, what's my best time? Yeah. That's great, Lynn. Yeah, I think that's a great perspective. I think that um, with, we, we do our sport and without being able to talk to anybody. We look at the black line. Um, it's not a whole lot of um, interaction with a lot of other people. And when I, when I do a lot of talking, I, I fully understand that swimming is a team sport. Like I wouldn't, wouldn't be, I think, going to the, the pool at five o'clock in the morning you have to have your teammates with you. Like I get, I understand you get all that, but but when you're in the water, you're it's just you, and so I, along with what's with what Teeter said, it's you're responsible for your performance. You don't you can't rely on your teammates to, you know, if you're, you're only going to score two points today, your teammates are going to score 25. You can't you don't have that you don't have that um, ability. So I think being able to to kind of be within yourself, do what you need to do, but but really push yourself because uh, you're only looking at the black line and it's just you when it comes to, uh, comes to your performance, that is, that's probably one thing that I would use to separate as well. And, and I'll take a little different spin because I agree with everything that they've said already, but um, something that I didn't recognize when I was swimming but has of a parent, and somebody mentioned it yesterday, but the fact that you interact with a lot of different ages. You know, when, when my kids are out in soccer, they are with their same age, same sex a lot of times. Um, the interaction with, um, you know, being swimming next to boys and different ages, um, you know, my kids, 
I've seen them look up to their coaches, and now you know my son's going to be the junior coach, and he can't wait. And there's a real life lesson there about you know mentoring and looking up and and being a role model for the younger kids and and behaving, <laughs> which is a good thing. <laughs> So Ellen, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stay with you uh, since you're not specifically working in the in the sport of swimming or within the industry right now. If you were on either side of a job interview table, uh -huh. uh, interviewing for a job or a prospective employee interviewing with you, how would you talk about your swimming background in the context of a job interview? So what I talk about is um, teamwork. You know, that's pretty obvious. Um, and, and maybe it's not obvious with swimming. You mentioned it. But, you know, I do explain that there is a lot of teamwork. Um, but a couple of the other things that I highlight is the ability to adapt. You know, there's nothing like diving in and your goggles coming off, you know, and I have a mile to go and I don't have any goggles, you know, and I have to adapt and figure it out. And you know, if I close this eye, I can kind of see out of this one and, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, and then the other thing I say is that the hard work pays out in different ways. And that's a life lesson that is not always, you know, we all maybe worked really, really hard, but I might not have gotten my best time for a number of reasons, but there were probably other benefits that I got. And that determination to just keep working hard, even though it didn't pay out the exact way I wanted, but I was, I'm determined to do it the next time, um, has served me well in my career. You know, we were talking beforehand, there's, a, there's been a time where we had two employees for a position, it was head to head, and one of them happened to be the captain of, a, of her college swim team, and that gave her the edge in a hiring process. So Susan, similar question to you then, how do you talk to your swimming uh, student athletes about how to talk about swimming post swimming career in, in the business setting, whether it be an interview or similar? All right. There's a great article. Um, I don't have it here, and I can get it to you to share with the group. And it, I don't know where I got it. I've had it for years. It's, uh, it's about 10 or 15 qualities that athletes bring companies after graduation and we give that to our kids every year because we want them to really understand that piece of it and I think you know swimming's one of those sports you get in the water you do it every day you don't think a lot about it it just gets in your blood and you just do it and then when you get out you, you don't always have the way to articulate it and I think that's why it's so important for me to teach the life skills along the way so that they can articulate those pieces and that they understand that I, I really believe that swimming on a team is a microcosm of everything that happens outside the door when you walk out. So, you know, whatever's going on on your team, that's life. And you're going to have to figure that out. And you have to figure it out here so you can be better at it out there. And so for us, it's something that they're constantly hearing. This is why we're doing this, so that you can understand how to do it in this small framework because you're going to have to take it and it's going to make you more successful and make you move faster in the world of business. L Lindsay, similar, do you find athletes take their swimming for granted somewhat after their career and are hesitant to talk about it? Do you encourage them to talk about it and use that for whatever they're doing in life? I, I, absolutely, I think they definitely take it for granted. They don't under, they don't um, understand the skills that that they 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 understand that they have determination. They know how to set goals. <laughs> they're they're leaders. Like they they know that they work hard. Like they they understand all that. I think the biggest problem is how you talk to somebody across the table about those and about how you you know like I've you're sitting on one side of the table and you're like I've got five gold medals and then the person on the other side of the table is saying so what <laughs> and I think that I think that that's um, something that you, you have to teach them that they have to be able to do that and I think uh, Teeter actually pointed on it really well about um, teaching team dynamics is super important because when you're in a when you're in a business setting you're working you're working with a team and you have to be able to work with different personalities throughout you know in in not only in your team setting but in your uh, in your business setting and I think that's super important so being able to work with different personalities is is something that isn't necessarily talked about all the time but something that's really important when you get into the business world. Yeah. So Ellen, maybe we'll start with you on this one. Um, you know, when you look back to coaches in your career, one of them happens to be in the room with, with, <laughs> with, with Kim O'Shea. What are lessons from swimming that you look back to that you still use today in the business setting? You know, one of the biggest ones um, is the um, ability to not take things personally. 
So that's a weird one, but um, you know, I, I had three different coaches in college. Um, they all had very different personalities. Some talked to me, some didn't. Um, and some of my teammates really struggled with some of that. And the fact of the matter is I kind of was like, yeah, she may be busy today. You know, I did, just didn't take it personally. And that has really, really served me well because that happens all the time. You have bosses who kind of don't like you and you have other bosses who really do, you know, and sometimes they pay attention to you and sometimes they don't. It's maybe not really reflective of you. You know, you get kind of focused that it's about you and 90% of the time it's probably not. <laughs> so um, that is a weird one, but it's one that served me for years. That's a great one. Lindsay, anything for you? Um, I th no, I don't have anything to add. I like that one. <laughs> I'm gonna stick with this one. How, how about turn the tables for you, Susan, on the, on the coaching side of it. Um, if, if your swimmers gathered in a room and we're talking about you now, about lessons that you have taught them, you know, not the personal side, um, about lessons you've taught them. What, what would you hope swimmers would say about lessons you've taught them? I think the, the thing that I feel like I've become known for by my athletes is the word tradition. And there are traditions um, that I expect of people as human beings that if you can't live up to those standards, I'm probably not going to be very happy with you. And that's everything from can you shake someone's hand properly and look them in the eye to do you know how to be a good adult? How do, you know, do you know how to help someone if they're struggling? Do you, I mean, these are just expectations that you would think that good human beings w would do. And I think it's easy to get self-absorbed in, um, in college and try to just be making it day to day. And, and I'm like, that's just not good enough if you want to be on this team. And so I think they would tell you I'm pretty tough and um, I expect a lot of them as women. And um, you know, I like to say, if you're gonna come in here as a young woman, you're gonna walk out of here as a woman and uh, a strong one at that. And so I think that's probably what I'd hope they'd say. And hmm. That's great. I, I've learned, I learned a lesson from Teeter um, 16, 17 years ago. Uh, uh, Teeter was a, a team manager on the Olympic team in Sydney in 2000. And, and I was fortunate enough to be elected team captain to that, to that Olympic team. And, and I remember Teeter just saying that she's, um, I want she called it ego managing, but I think she went to, say, what I think I learned from her is that she's managing expectations of all these different personalities and people in the room. And she did that so well. And I think that that just kind of, kind of taught me that as a team captain, I need to understand each individual, but be able to manage it in a way that is, uh, that serves the greater purpose. And I think that's um, something that has stuck with me throughout, I mean, it's been 16 years, 17 years since, since I've, I've uh, learned that from her. Great. So it's definitely something that's stuck with me the whole time. That's a great one. Yeah. So Ellen, I'll start, start this one with you as well. When you either get into a, a meeting and you discover someone's a swimmer or you do a little research in advance and discover someone's a swimmer, what, what happens when that comes up in the conversation? Oh, we immediately start talking. Where'd you go? Would you swim? What did, and, and do you still swim? The heck no. Um, <laughs> or yes. Um, it, um, it's an icebreaker. It, it is a complete icebreaker. Um, and you know, I uh, met Sid here yesterday. He said, "Hey, I had a swimmer swim at Coke." I'm like, "I know who it is, Paige Jones." And he was like, "Yeah, I, met, I recruited her. You know, her husband." And it's just, it's a complete icebreaker. Um, and it's fun. You know, it just makes for a um, much more lively conversation and um, you're fast friends. <laughs> fast friends. There's an immediate connection. Yes. You both work in the industry. Do you find that when you're working outside the industry, talking to a potential donor, sponsor, vendor, do you find that same dynamic at all? Absolutely. I, th I think so, yeah, for sure. I think swimming is, so you, you get an obvious connection with swimmers, but then I think college athletes in general, I feel like I have a little bit in a connection with as well as like, oh, you went to Southern Cal or I went to UCLA and then you're like, oh, do I really have to talk to you? But, um, but no, I think, I think it's, um, I think just as, as, as being a student athlete, being able to relate that to anybody, I think that that, I, I learned that it's not just swimming, it's student athletes in general. So Ellen had a great, oh, sorry, Susan. I was gonna say, I think um, one of the great things about how USA Swimming has grown and, and how we look at our Olympic trials now is, is that not only do you break the ice with, oh, you swam, most people, if you're trying to negotiate with them or you're trying to get a meeting with them or something, 
you know, they're like, oh, you, you coach. Oh, do you know Michael Phelps? And you're yeah. like, you know, and I do, but <laughs> even if I didn't, I would use that to walk in the door. I would, I would find a way to say, well, you know, I actually don't know Michael and, and you, know, you know, I know a lot of my kids. You find a connection because you know they're going to come up with, you know, Katie Ledecky. Do you know Katie Ledecky? And so find that connection because people want to, it's like I said it yesterday, everyone wants to know an Olympian. Mm -hmm. And even if you know someone who knows an Olympian, it's a foot in the door. <laughs> and so, you know, I think we can use that for our sport and connecting people to why we're doing what we're doing. Because for some people, all they can understand is Michael Phelps. All they can understand is Katie Ledecky. So what's that look like? And, and I think that we can use those people to help them identify with what we're trying to do in club sports and college sports to grow these into our next Olympians. So Ellen had a great example of, I, I, I would bet her coaches didn't intend to convey the message of, you know, not to take it personally. Um, great unintended consequence, but for either you, Lindsay, or you, Susan, are there things that you look back on, uh, on swimming and, for lack of a better word, that are slightly unusual or different lessons that you're like, oh, I didn't really expect that, but I really draw on that from my, from my swimming experience. You want to go first? I can go first. Yeah, let, let me think about it first. <laughs> <laughs> well, I said this to Matt earlier. I think some of the most important lessons that I've learned that I didn't expect to learn were from coaches that I didn't think were very good. And when I was young and trying to get into the to coaching and I was working lots of camps along the way and meeting lots of people and I would think well, that's not okay that you treat a human being like that and that's not okay that you talk to somebody like that and I and I kept thinking why am I working here because I didn't I didn't like a lot of what I saw and it shaped who I was as a coach because I thought I, I don't ever want to treat someone like that or I don't ever want to do that or I don't ever, you know, and it was, it was like I was building a list of please don't end up like this. <laughs> and so for me, it's, it's kind of a weird way to look at it. And I believe that, you know, I've got kids on my team that are slower than I was. And I was a terrible athlete. And I've got kids that are brilliant. And for me, it was the most important thing. Somebody gave me a chance. I want to give somebody a chance. And, and I think that kind of along along those lines, and I go back. I said it earlier about the, t the teamwork thing. I think um, I've all, I feel like I've always been a team player, but to see it play out in in different ways, I think one of the first first times I really understood it was um, I came from a small town, went to a big college, swam with with Janet Evans and and other Olympians, and it it didn't matter that I was from this small this small little town. That I Janet still was like you you're part of this team, you need to step up, you need to be a part of this team. And, and I think that that was, uh, that to me was really empowering. It was like, it doesn't matter where you're, where you're from, you can still make an impact on, on this team and, and what, where this team is going. And that to me was kind of the first, first uh, mental note of like, oh, this is, this is a lot bigger than me. And, and um, yeah. so it was, it was um, kind of eye-opening. So one more question for the three of you, and then we'll open it up to, to, to others. And I'll make this a jump ball, whoever, whoever wants this one. Uh -oh. But if you were going to describe your professional style in, in, the, in the workplace, and you had to compare it to a specific event, 100 free, 400 IM, 200 breaststroke, what's your personal style, and how would you compare it to an event? <laughs> oh. Should have given that one to us Four, earlier. I was just going to say, <laughs> yeah, that's a little bit of tough. Susan. 400 I am. Whoa. Why? Because it's tough, and this is tough. This is a tough profession to be in, and you got to be able to do a lot of things, and you and you got to figure out how you're going to do them right. And um, you may not you may not be a great backstroker, but you better figure it out. And you got to figure out how to nail the fly to back turn, and you got to figure out how to nail the back to breast turn. And so. <laughs> You know, there's always going to be a piece of a 400 IM you got to work on. So there's, I mean, if you stop learning, get out of coaching. And that's not why I'm retiring. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still trying to learn. <laughs> well, I, I agree with the learning piece. And, I, and I'm going to choose to and free because that's what I swam because I never felt like I perfected it. And I feel like there's always something that I can learn and always something that can, um, 
I can get better at and no matter what. And, and I was never able to reach the, the ultimate goal in the 200 free. So for me, I'm always striving to be better so I can reach the ultimate goal in, in the work that I do. And so I think that that's probably how I would, I would relate it. It's very, it's very similar, it's just a different event. <laughs> And I was going to say Tuna Free, which was not my best event, but I loved it. Um, but it was more, for me, it's more about the fact that I, I was focused on that third 50. Is like, that was like where I really had to try to make or break the 200 for me. And so for me in my work, it's kind of the work going in. It's not the last lap. It's not the glory moments of like at the event. It's the prep beforehand. And um, that's really where I have, you know, I felt like succeeded because I was willing to do that work beforehand. And then the 50, you know, that last 50, you're just coming home, right? But um, not really. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it doesn't always swimmer, just work out distance, that way. The distance swimmer, you, had, you could come home that last 50, that third one that killed me. So, um, so that's for me, too. Oh, those are great. Oh, three great professionals and even better people. Thank you.